I'm interested to see which peers are mad at me because it may interfere with their work. But, yeah. You get a grown ass man that knows that you're heterosexual and you're sleeping off Hennessy in his guest room. Because he says it's safe. Because you know, I know I'm bent. So I don't, after a big party, I won't say what type, I won't say where. I'm sleep. I'm I'm gone because I'm four five Hennessy's deep and not short Hennessy's either. And this dude tries to climb into bed with you. So you spaz out, push him out, like what the fuck? Get ready to leave. He apologizes. Blame it on the alcohol. And you try to forgive him. So you're like, all right, man. All right, I'm gone. You shake his hand on the way out and he tries to grab your penis. He tries to shake and grab your equipment. And you spaz even more. Like, what the fuck you doing, man? What the fuck you, what the fuck? Oh, my bad, my bad. My so you go to leave, he tries to do it again. Now, at that point, my only regret is not breaking multiple bones in this person's face. Like beating the dog shit out of this person, right? Because that's available to me at all times. That in her grizzly bear is always available, but in the moment I'm like, what the fuck, what the fuck? And wanted to, but you got a guy that's a billionaire and I got three grand in my bank account. Who do you gonna believe? Right? I got that three grand, that's, my son's mom's rent for next month. You know, got to make sure little man is taken care of. That's my rent. So only because you got $3,000, you didn't break this nigga face. You didn't. Because you only got $3,000 and he's a billionaire. You didn't break his face because he climbed in the bed with you. Even after he climbed in the bed and you spazzed out, he went and grabbed your nuts. You spazzed out again and he still went even grabbed your nuts again. And you didn't spaz out because you didn't think nobody would believe you. But in the moment, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And what? To... But you got a guy that's a billionaire, and I got three grand in my bank account who do you gonna believe right i got that three grand that's my son's mom's rent for next month you know gotta make sure little man is taken care of that's my rent and that's a little bit for the gas tank and the rest of it i can go to the dollar store and get some bread and bologna and hot dogs and mustard and, and you know i can get by work was slow and a lot of the work that was coming was it had penis attached to it. I'm like, fuck that, man. I'm not, that's not what I want. That's not what I'm about to do. I regret not speaking up then, not being brave enough to, and I regret not hurting this person because I'm a, I'm a 
I got a big heart. Mother had a big heart. Mother's heart was just big as Flint, Michigan. So a man could damn near rape you. And you gonna have a big heart. Okay, brother. That's a hell of a heart. Nigga, heart bigger than King Kong's, boy. She's like a little, little, little yellow boy. You finna come and you gonna be a part of my family. And I always try to think about things, you know, and not lash out, even though I wanted to, even though I want to. I'm mad at me for not hitting him. I'm mad at me for not speaking up and saying something. Because between that year and now, how many young black actors have fell for that? How many of them, and you can hear him say it on, on you can hear him on the, on the conversations. You can hear him on the conversations. You can hear him say, they go to toy with the box. That he has several guys, multiple guys on payroll, six figures a year that pop up and they do whatever he wants and they go back home. So they pop in, they grab their ankles, they do whatever he wants. And I'm like, I'm not finna fucking do that. I'm not doing that. I don't wanna make it that bad. I want to be able to shave in the fucking morning without any grief or any regret or any shame waiting for me in the mirror. Well, I don't know how you looking at yourself in the mirror now, brother. After getting on YouTube doing this shit and then I doing the mother effing thing about it. Nothing. No follow up, no nothing. Which means what? There's a trauma that comes with being bullied and intimidated and sexually harassed like that. And the bad part is when the truth comes out, a lot of y'all in here gonna be like, man, I don't believe it. And you can watch me on whatever news station. I'll take photographs live on TV. You can hear the recordings yourself. Person has a very distinctive voice when they offer me a hundred grand to take my clothes off. Person has a very distinguished voice, distinctive voice when they literally sexually assault me and try to grab my private parts and I'm blocking their hand like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, oh, my bad, my bad. And tries to do it again. Some of these people are y'all heroes. Some of these people y'all have deified and set up on a stool or on a stoop. It's taking everything in me not to say. But I promise you this, I will, I will promise you this. As an executive on a show, I'm grateful for this person for showing me how not to be. When you're the boss, how not to be. You don't sexually harass your employees. You don't pressure them, bully them, try to intimidate them into what you want. I'm, I am grateful for that lesson. I'm glad that God sat back because not only was he watching to see if I was the person that he thought he had made, but he was letting me see who I am. And I'm grateful for it. Because it let me know and that, and that gave me a lot of my bravery. I'm, uh, I thank God that he just sat back and watched.
Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I know the, the violins are starting to play now. I'm starting to hear the violins now. Starting to hear the violins, man. Like, come on, bro. See, and, and this is what I keep telling y'all. This industry is a wicked place. A lot of y'all be sitting there and you you idolize these people. You don't, and I don't blame you because I, I was the same way until I got to walk the yellow brick road and get to Oz and see behind the fucking curtain and see that the great Oz was this fucking little ass midget using auto tune to sound like this big ass monster. You know what I'm saying? I believe that a lot of this bullshit, the hype in this bullshit industry too. Instagram is about to be over. All right, I only got one bar left. Come over to YouTube. All right. There's so many, it's so many layers of this bullshit within the industry. And people don't be believing you. But I believe everything that he's saying about um, him being sexually harassed, I just have a problem with him. Had he not ever came forth and did this and said nothing, then I, I wouldn't have no, no issue. But I championed him when he came forth. I championed him. Because I know that story, and there's plenty of us that have been in that situation. But me, I'm not sticking around that long. I'm not having that much experience. And I damn sure ain't going to the nigga house that I know is trying to hit on me for nothing. Drunk, sober, birthday party, I don't give a fuck what it is. If I know this nigga like me, I'm not stepping foot in the vampire's house, bro. And drunk. And they could have roofied you and, 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 and took your back pockets. This dude giving him all these weird advances and he stayed working with him, stay working with him, stay working with him. Up until this year, last year, whenever the show came out. I think January it came out. Stay there. Then came out here and said all of this and did nothing. 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 All yo, this man, you just told us who we assume to believe. I ain't gonna even say the name no more. But this man with the distinctive voice that the world would know him. Uh, clearly, he got to be a star for the world to know him, right? To know his voice. You mean to tell me? This man got in the bed with you. And he get a pass? Or was you acting when you came out and did this? Brother, I supported you, man. I supported you and stuff. And it's like, It's like the Little Rod situation with him. All these years, and now you even got a show on this man's uh, network or his do do his production company. If it is him, but a man can get in, go as far as getting to bed with you. 
and then grab your sack twice after getting in the bed with you. And you continue to work with this person after that. And you come out in the do this video. And then you disappear on us. That shit is cold, bro. That's cold. That's cold. But. And you see, he said Cassie's the one that inspired him to come and talk. You see how Cassie got that 30 million? Got motherfuckers like him, Luda Raw, hey, motherfuckers just jumping out here. And but nobody is not about money for nobody. Right? It's not about money for none of these niggas. It ain't about money. But they out here ready to tell all these niggas business to the point to the point where they ready to get them uh, incriminated on charges, but it's never about the money. And you sit around these people and you tolerate and you see all this and deal with all this stuff that could be criminal, but you wait for the statute of limitations to run out before you say anything. Man. Y'all be just as guilty with these people and sat, sit here and play innocent now. That shit is corny to me. And niggas is giving niggas passes for letting a nigga get in the bed with him and say that they didn't want to, they didn't beat their ass. Not saying that they should have beat their ass. You know, because violence doesn't solve anything. But the fact that they didn't call the police because they felt like this person had more money than them. It's the entertainment industry, man. Niggas will sell out, man. Niggas will sell out. Niggas will sell out. It's very few of us that's going to say F that. When the motherfucker do you wrong, they do you wrong. It ain't, yo, I'm not cloud chasing. I'm not, I don't want the fame to say. Man, I quit Rockefeller. That nigga Duke the God told me I was crazy. Joke, why you quitting? Joke. Yo, you at Rockefeller. You on the top of the world, nigga. Yo, what you doing? Look what happened to Rockefeller. All because I wasn't getting my credit. I chose to walk. What's the purpose of me? I was getting paid good money. The money was good. But if I wasn't going to get the credit for the work that I was doing, what am I sticking around for? So if a nigga was trying to sleep with me and the money is good, I'm just going to sit there and just like keep letting this nigga flirt with me for years and years and years. And just acting like I don't see it, and 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 not. It's like the the chick that you you meet that you want to hit. You just keep taking a shop and shop and taking her to dinner and everything, hoping one day she give into it. That's what he doing. You gonna keep working with this man and being around this man to the point where you eventually you know this man like you, and you gonna go stay at his house, drunk. That's like the girl that go to the hotel room at 2 a.m. and thinking that the dude don't want to have sex. Oh, I thought you wanted us to. We was just going to Netflix and chill. You coming over at 2 in the morning to Netflix and chill, shorty? I called you over here because I was horny. It's booty hour. Like it's 2 in the morning. Thought you wanted to me to help you fold clothes. 
You go spend the night at this man's house, bro. That's been hitting on you. Katie came to your house and offered you a hundred grand to see you naked. You didn't take that? And you only had three thousand dollars and you didn't take a hundred grand just to see you naked. The nigga wanted to see you that naked that bad. All he would have to do is write up a scene for you on the show for you to do a shower scene. Or you to do a scene with a woman naked. So you telling us the nigga showed up to your door with a hundred bands just to see you naked. And you didn't do it. But all he got to do is write your character to take a shower and he can see you naked. What you gonna say? Oh, I ain't doing that role. Oh, I I supposed to be in the shower in this scene. I ain't I ain't doing that. But you telling us he offered you a hundred band just to see you naked, and you didn't take it. But you'll go work twelve hours on the show. Yeah, all right, bro. All right. If you say so. If you say so. I don't know, man. I I I I'm I'm just disappointed in this brother. I really thought that uh a lot of us had an ally in him. You know what I'm saying? Like the little raw dude going that diddy. I'm just not a fan of succumbing to whatever this fucking celebrity want to do, want you to do, whether it's go hire sex workers, drugs, whatever it is, and you do it into the duration of your relationship. And then when the relationship is over, you are victim. But when you was in the video, when you was a victim for the stuff that you're saying you was a victim for, all the allegations against you, not once did you go to the fucking precinct and file a police report. You never went to press charges. And this person drugged you and all this shit. But you never went to the precinct to press charges. Ha <sighs> Goddamn entertainment business, man. Choke no joke, man. Please hit that like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate it. Make sure y'all get the Hip Hop Nucleus out on Amazon Prime, Tubi, Apple TV, Stash, all those other digital platforms. Yeah, man. I got to go take a shower, man. And have me a good night. Because uh, this entertainment industry is bugging. So, no diddy means what? It means nothing when you see what this dude went through, right? He he might have a no somebody whoever his allegations is is to. Cause a nigga trying to climb in the bed with you. A grown man climbing in the bed with you and then grabbing your nuts after that, like, Kai, what do you mean no? Kai, come here, Christian. Kai. Like, I hey. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. I'm gonna give y'all a special preview tonight of the uh the hip hop nucleus right now. So stay tuned, don't go nowhere. Let me give y'all a special preview of the hip hop nucleus, all right? As I step up in the place at a slow pace. Looking real lace with my celly to the face. Watch out for the sewage. Yeah. I was like, damn. Hey, 
even though the entrance to the tunnel is on 27th Street and 12th Avenue, the entry really started on 11th Avenue, that, that long block, because that's where we started stopping everybody. You are not fly if they didn't know you to let open up the banister and let you drive and park on the block. It wasn't important. You had to wait about three blocks to get in the motherfucker. It was about 3,000 people on line. The line is just so astronomically long. Once you make your travel trip up the block, you have to get on this long gate. Everybody about to go get on this line. Like we about to go up in the tunnel. Your name is? Liz. Where you from? I'm Dominican and Cuban. What borough you represent? Uptown, Harlem World. Oh, oops, Harlem World today. So I remember getting out the car and you know what I'm saying? walking down a long alley, like, man, hold up, cuz, where we going? Like, this ain't no club, you know what I'm saying? Usually, first 500 women are free, and when I got to work, the line was on the block, and sometimes people were standing on cars and already rioting, wanting to get in for free. But once you got to that gate and it was trapped off, you had ID, you was good to come in. You didn't have that ID, you had to grease somebody to get through that gate. My man used to be at the top of the, the, top of the block up there, used to be charging cats $10 just to get on the line, and they used to pay it. You ain't know the homie that was running it, or they ain't know you, somebody ain't know you, big top flight security and all the diesel brothers and the ice that was out there, then more than likely, nine times out of 10, you was getting played. By the time you get up, you know, in the club, you might be down 100 already. I don't know, just to get in, it seemed like you had to be thorough. Make sure you cut that line, get to the front. Me and Jim used to always run up to the front of the door and just Debo our way through. Fuck a line, fuck 11th Avenue with the bike racks and nothing. We came down 28th Street, around the back to the West Side Highway, yeah. right in it. Paul, you, over here, nigga. The guys lined up along 27th Street, and the guys' line was always the longest line, and it was like hours before they got to the front door, and the ladies lined up along the West Side Highway. So if you came with your boys and you came with girls, it's no telling everybody got in or not. You know what I'm saying? And remember back then, everybody ain't had cell phones. We outside the tunnel, and we about to go inside in like five seconds. You know what I'm saying? You started from 11th Avenue. That was a security check. ID, please. Then you had to get online. The gates was actually the first ID check. ID. Got down to the middle of the block was another security check. And then you had to get to the door. Was another ID check. ID. And then you had to get to the stairs. ID. It was various channels to get into the door. And you'd have to walk up into the club and be searched. At one point, it was all one search area, male and females in one area. And eventually they decided, well, let's just cut that up and put the girls in one side and the guys in another. The search procedures was no other. We did actually search you very tightly. That search was the worst search ever. The search was sheer disrespect. They was doing it in the tunnel what the airport security does now. Search at the tunnel was like Rikers Island search. Rikers. Rikers Island. It was like going into the penile and penitentiary, yo. You had to check in at the door, you get frisked down, get your clothes to go in, and you stepping in with a whole bunch of motherfuckers you ain't never seen before and shit. So you gotta get your corner, and you gotta get your back turned to the shit so if it pop down, you ready to get it in because you feel like you're in a motherfucking yard with a, with a big ass system playing. So the minute they walked in there, you had Big Rob saying, we're gonna search you down, we find any type of weapon, we're gonna kick your ass and dump you in the dumpster. Took these jackets off, kicked off their boots, you know, sometimes even the socks. First time I ever heard of take your shoes off, open your mouth, was in the tunnel. It was damn near anything but a full cavity search and shit. Cause niggas back then, they were spitting razors and shit. So they be like, I open your mouth. Take, grab the boots, bang them, bang, hit them on the ground, just like they do on the island. Make sure they ain't got no knives and razors up in there. If you got dreads, you gotta shake out your dreads. They check you, check the soles of your feet, give you a nut check, check under your collar. They did everything but made you squat. Man, it really reminded me when I used to go to the island. <laughs> to see see my loved ones. And I don't care how well you hid your contraband, they will find it. We used to catch all sorts of stuff up, coming up through that search area, man. Guns, knives, dope, coke. All the fucking bouncers used to be trying to find any and everything. Not to find, not to include everything they were trying to put in their pocket on the side. You know, them type of niggas that go search you, find 20, you know what I'm saying, find something dirty, tell you, yo, my nigga, you gotta fix me up. And let you go in with it regardless. You feel me? You know how that go. You can always pay for the tunnel security. I had a searcher, I won't say his name. He'll know once he sees this video. And he would have a box 
in the middle of the search area. So all the weed that was confiscated was to go into that box. So during the course of the night, I would walk by and talk about weed. My God, we're talking about a, a box half full of weed. Now the cops have a habit of walking in the building all the time and say, Sterling, man, this place smells like weed. I said, that's impossible. You know, no one even smokes inside here. You know, it smells like unsmoked weed. Like you got a, like a, you got a plantation of weed in here. Not knowing that this mook got a box full of weed right over there. I'm walking the cops right by it. Well, and I'm like, what the fuck? What, what are you doing, bro? When I found out, I, 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 was so, I fired him. Dude, he goes, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, I didn't see something. I'm not, that's not me, I'm not, I'm not telling them to put it in there. They put it in there. I said, where does it go at the end of the night? Where does it go? I used to get everybody's weed. They would put it on the table right there, me and the homies. I never had to bring weed to the club, <laughs> to be honest with you. So yeah, shout out to Tunnel Security. So we're searching, I'm searching the kid, search his boots or whatever he had on, sneakers. I search his body, I said, okay, I gotta go through your bag. So he goes, okay, he opens up his bag. And when I did this, the other guys that were behind the, 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 the magnometers, they, they were all like this, like, they all just sort of lean forward, like, like, yo, what's up? It was, it, in there was money. We're not talking about one stack of money, we're talking about stacks. And so he had to have, what I thought back then might have been 30,000, was probably closer to 60. That's a guess. It was all in there in cash. I said, look, I gotta stick my hand. I, I realized what, what was up, and I had to stick my hand in there and search around, make sure there wasn't, it was nothing but fucking cash. And they had the skinniest kid wearing the bag, like in the front, you know, like in the front of him. Now again, I'm not robbing nobody, it's not my thing. But I'll tell you what, considering all the security there was 99% black, I wish that one day in my whole life I was black. Because, because if I had the option, and, and not because I want to be black, but because then he wouldn't have noticed me choking him out from behind. I'd have, I'd have had somebody start a riot and choke the kid. He'd have disappeared into the crowd with me, the bag would have been gone, and I'd have showed up next Sunday like it all was good. It was the regular person search, which was like a full body prison cavity search. And then it was like the, like the celebrity search, which was a high five, a pound, go ahead. A uh, funny story about that, me and Red Man, we, we worked out together in the same Fifth Avenue gym. So I'm like, you know, Reggie. He came in with meth and the whole Wu-Tang posse one night. And, you know, I'm like, you know, and Sterling was standing like right, right next to me, like over there, he could hear. And I'm like, Red, yeah, well, what's good, Reggie? And I gave him a pound, let him slide by. Meth Man stepped up to me and I went to search him, he's like, and he was like mad loud, yo, you ain't search Reggie. And I'm like, shut up, man. <laughs> I'm like, and I don't, I don't front like, you know, like I know, I'm like, I know who you are, but I don't know you like that. I know him like that, but I don't know you like that. So I flipped open his jacket, he had mad duchess in there. And I'm like, yo, hold that down. And he was like, oh yeah, you know, he thought I was the coolest person that night. New York has always been notorious for that. Like you from Eden Wall, there's a nigga that works the door you good. You can come in with a fucking Uzi and niggas wouldn't say nothing to you. But if you wasn't from, and if that nigga was doing the door and you wasn't from Eden Wall, he about to take off your shoes, take off your socks, pull your pants down, pull your shirt up. And there was girls that I, I said, I can't search her. She peed on herself. She was like, it was cold outside. I said, you still coming in? And we were like, no, you gotta go home. And she didn't. She went right inside. She went into the water and she put it in the dryer. And she kept on partying. The girls used to have to come in. They used to have to remove their shoes. I mean, they wanted to go through your purse and everything or whatever, but I just really didn't like taking off my shoes. That was the thing that I just really just didn't like. You know, they said we searched them worse than going to Rikers. They didn't have to have that much uh, cavity searching. Um, when we searched, we had to put our hand because you could tell the difference when they're walking, they will roll up whatever they had to roll up and put it in their pads. So, there were incidents and times that were, they'd give knives and stuff to their partners that are waiting inside. So we will let them know that before we were going to search that if they don't feel comfortable with it, that they could go ahead and leave. And they were like, go ahead. But this one particular female, they pulled it out and it was time in the camera. It was, which is crazy, like they check everything, but you still get it through. The entry to the tunnel was worse than entering the courtroom, only for the fact of a safety purpose. But you knew that once you gained access into that building, there's a glorifiable night that you will never forget. Choke no joke. Y'all already know. If y'all want to see the rest of that, to see the whole thing, it's right here on Tubi.
Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Stash on YouTube. You can watch it for free on YouTube at Stash uh, Stash Movies, all right? Or you can watch it free on Tubi and get it in Apple TV, Amazon Prime. Choke no joke, all right? See y'all in the morning, man. Y'all know how we do. Y'all better be ready to work out in the morning, man. You know what I mean? It's that time again. Summer's here. It's summer, summer, summer time. Summer time. All right. This one go out to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Dirty South, Canada, Great Britain, Germany, the Netherlands, Ireland, Africa. Everybody that watch Choke No Joke, man. Hit that subscribe button before you go, all right? Hit that like before you go. Choke No Joke. I'm out. Peace. Put it up. Trees and the palms of dealers and fiends. Late night roam the streets. Weed is weaker, but it's cheaper. Not many chicks frying like divas. Out west, every chick's a model like Eva, and you know I'm far from believing her. So I'm Ging her like she G and me. Banging in LA is a different thing. At the end, you either dead on the bang, getting out, doing better things on sunset where they hang. Hollywood, where they hustle for change. Times Square here, it's the same. No matter where you go, you'll find the lane. On the west, they kick it with cane. On the east, trees the souls you think. East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rap, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast, grab your glasses, take a toast, if you rep East Coast. When I'm on the West and I'm doing my thing, no offer me coke, all your nose I bang. Friends don't offer other deadly things, thanks for the hospitality, we'll still hang. I won't judge you, leave me as I came, on the road to success, top of the game. Eat all the finer things in the food chain, teach my kids to do the same, whether Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rep, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep, East Coast. You gotta love life and all for wonderful things. Being the travel is a privileged thing. Came back to the East. Air wasn't fresh, streets filled with trash, various people in the ass. It's easy to tell who's up a middle class. Police and racism, same as crash. Back to where they not social, where they less vocal. When they don't know you, be careful, show you around the East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rap, East Coast, whether East Coast, West Coast. East Coast, West Coast, pop your bottles and toss the cork, if you rep West Coast. Both coasts are known to give you fame, got paparazzi's playing cameras your way, got you bobbing and weaving like Cassius Clay, most thugs turn Muslim in older days, change their name to a law they pray, probably till they decay, this go out to the East and West. For big and pop, y'all, let's connect. Rather East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rep, West Coast. Rather East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. You can't get the West without the ES. So it's manifested that we connect. Uh. You know what it is. Choke, no joke. Learn from mistakes, baby. You know what it is. Greg on the track. Rest in peace, baby. Eat a wall, we in now. You know what it is. Choke, no joke. Smile, treat me, you know.
Good night, y'all. Make sure y'all kiss the babies. Good night. Hit that like and subscribe before you go. Choke no joke. Good night. I'm gone.